Um, so, yes, Raspberry Pis. Why don't we use Raspberry Pis for Android? Well, of course we do. Um, so I guess the first question is, why Raspberry Pi? Um, and my responses are as shown. So first of all, particularly the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5, they are powerful enough to run Android pretty well, uh, even running the latest versions of Android. Um, so they are suitable targets for Android. The next and biggest thing I think is that Raspberry Pi is a standard. Everybody knows what a Raspberry Pi is. So if you say Raspberry Pi, people know what you're talking about. Uh, they're fairly easy to get hold of, except during pandemics when they go out of production, but that's that's over now. Um, and the hardware support is pretty good. So they still support even the older, I think you can still buy a Raspberry Pi 2 uh, if you really want to. Um, and they don't cost very much. So all of those things, I think, make it a good platform for building and testing um, Android. So there's an incentive. Um, so why hasn't anybody done this? Well, of course, many people have done this. Um, there are many projects I could mention here, and I apologize for those I've missed out. Um, but the ones I, um, I'm looking at, we have Glowdroid. Uh, Glowdroid is especially interesting, and that's the one that I'm going to be using uh, in the next couple of slides. So Glowdroid originally, I think, was uh, a project to support the Orange Pi, um, but it added in support for various other boards, including the Raspberry Pi, over time. Uh, Glowdroid is pretty complete. It has many of the features I'm going to mention on the next slide, um, but it is a little bit too much. It's gradually turning it into a distribution rather than just a board support package. So Glowdroid is a good choice, um, but it does too much, in my opinion. Um, Android RPi has been around probably the longest of the whole lot, uh, at least to my knowledge. Android RPi um, uh, has been building Android for Raspberry Pis, at least since the Raspberry Pi 3, and I've been using it since then. The problem with the Android RPi is that it's a little bit lightweight. It uh, implements Android in a very minimalist way and not really in a very compatible way. So it's lacking a lot of features. Uh, Raspberry Vanilla um, is somewhat similar to Android RPi. Uh, it's done by a guy called Consta Kang, uh, who also does a an implementation of Android for Lineage OS. Um, so it's a good solution, but it also is a little bit minimalist in some ways. And also it is a little bit intrusive. It's tending to bring more and more Lineage OS features in, and it makes some slightly odd changes to the build system, which I don't like. Um, final boiling point, um, there is a Google group. So there is a discussion forum for Android on Raspberry Pi. Um, there's not a lot going on there, but there are various uh, things that pop up from time to time. So summary then, um, of the three I mentioned, they all uh, are good. Uh, but none of them quite do what I want. So what is my idea? What's my ideal Android for Raspberry Pi? So first of all, it should be based on as clean an ASP build as possible. So I don't want um, a distro which goes in and modifies the ASP code base, um, except in a few cases where it needs to be particularly in the graphics support. Um, the next point on there is that, as well as tablet format, I really, really want it to support automotive. So I want out-of-the-box support for automotive. And Android TV also would be nice. The next point, um, ADB over USB. I really dislike, and I find it, so you can use um, ADB uh, over a network, over Ethernet or Wi-Fi, whatever. I find it rather flaky. It comes in rather late, so you could have the system booted up to a fairly large extent before you can use ADB. Um, I much prefer USB. And also, if you have a USB connection in there, it would be nice if you could use, use Fastboot, so I can use standard Fastboot commands instead of fiddling around, pulling SD cards out and reflashing them and plugging them back in again, which isn't a pain. 
In terms of implementation, I really would like it to use the super partition. So dynamic, dynamically resized partitions. Really would like it if, if it used AB partition slots and it allowed us to do over the, end, uh, over the air updates, OTA. Uh, we really want a recovery mode. Uh, should be based on a GKI, a generic kernel image, which is the standard now for Android kernels. Um, it would be nice if we could optionally in, uh, enable uh, DM Verity and AVB. Um, an ultimate goal, and I think it's be a, would a, it would require a lot of work to get to this point, but I really would like to get to the point where we can run SE Linux in enforcing mode uh, instead of uh, in permissive mode as now. And it would be truly wonderful if it could pass all of the tests in the in the CTS and VTS, the compatibility test suite and the vendor test suite. If you do that, particularly with the CTS, uh, it then becomes Android compatible and you can even use Android in the name. So there's a list of things that I would re really would like in my ideal Android for Raspberry Pi. So um, this is my latest um, uh, implementation of this. Um, and yes, okay. So um, actually I've uploaded the, 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 I uploaded some of this code this, uh, this morning, to be honest. So I've written up uh, a project on how to implement this. Uh, there is a manifest and there is a configuration. So let's click on this. Actually, let's not click on that. Let's instead do this. OK, so this is the uh, main ASP meetup, um, which you should be familiar with. If I go down to the project pages, uh, there's a project now building ASP for the Raspberry Pi. And this is stepping through um, uh, downloading and building my modified fork of GlowDroid. So when I say modified, really all I've done so far is I've added in automotive support. So... Uh, and I've also switched to using a local manifest rather than, than GlowDroid 10 to use a, um, a full manifest, which is a real pain to maintain. So you begin by doing a repo init of whichever version of Android you want. Well, I say whatever version. Okay, it only actually works on Android 13. Whoops. And it, it has only been tested by me at least on release 11. So currently you are stuck with Android 13 release 11. But we can talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, then you create a local manifest, uh, git clone the manifest file, which is uh, A3M RPI manifest. A3M, in case you haven't realized this, this is the Android and AA, sorry, it's the AOSP and AAO. Oh, I can't even say it. And yeah, it's three A's. Um, RPI manifest git. Um, then you build it. Um, the build system from um, uh, provided by GlowDroid is slightly, uh, is, is modified. It, it ha modified. It has an images target. If you want to know what images does, you can look into this tools MK file here. Uh, but essentially, whoops, that is going to generate a uh, targz file, which contains all the stuff you need. Um, hardware, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi, recommend eight gigabytes. Um, yeah, fork out for a decent SD card. Don't just use the one that's lying around. You really want an A1 or an A2 class. They cost like 10 quid or something. And I'm just using a cheapo uh, HDMI touchscreen from Elecro, but there are many others. Um, they cost like 50 euros or something. Um, there's a bit of stuff here about power, which I'll leave you to read. Um, but because we are using the USB cable for ADB and, and fast boot, it actually winds up that you are powering 
at least if you don't do something else, uh, you are powering the Raspberry Pi from your uh, from your laptop or whatever. And depending on, on the, the hardware, you may find that it's current limited. Having said that, I actually find I can get away with it most of the time. Every now and again, it does kind of reboot, which I put down to a power glitch. Uh, this section is using uh, Fastboot to then, well, first of all, you, can, you create a recovery uh, SD card uh, using Raspberry Pi Imager or something similar to copy this file, deploy SD Im image. So you copy that file to an, S to an SD card, plug the SD card into your Raspberry Pi, it boots up into recovery mode, and then it's available as a fastboot device, and you can use this script here, which uh, uses the appropriate fastboot commands in order to push the various image files uh, to the target. Okay, so that's what it is. Uh, like I say, that basically works. Um, there are some glitches, but it basically works. So if I come back to my presentation. Um, so what needs to be done? So the reason I'm saying this is that I'm kind of looking for volunteers here. Um, if anybody wants to hack around on this, please do. The, the links uh, on the previous slide. Uh, but here are some things that need to be done. Uh, the first thing is that it's currently on Android 13. So it needs to be ported to 14. Likewise, uh, it could do with an update on the kernel. I can't even remember which kernel version it is. 5.15, I believe, but I'm not quite sure. It would be nice to update to a later kernel. And currently, it only supports Raspberry Pi 4, so it needs support adding in, in for 5. Then there's the other thing, as I mentioned a couple of slides back, um, it would be nice to start working on <clears throat> um, looking at the SE Linux exceptions and eliminating them one by one. Uh, so eventually we can run SE Linux in enforcing mode. Um, some brave person maybe can um, have a go at running CTS and VTS. I say brave because if you have not run CTS in particular, be aware that CTS takes um, not hours, but days. A typical CTS run is on a, on a Raspberry Pi, at least is going to take mm, minimum two days, I would think. Um, AVB, I put questions mark around AVB. I mean, I'm not quite sure how necessary this is, except I want to produce a complete platform. So Android Verify Boot would be a good thing to have, but I consider it to be lower priority than the other things. And then there is some cleaning up of the um, my fork of, of GlowDroid. <clears throat> my intention is that we don't try and track GlowDroid because they're going off in a di different direction anyhow. So this is uh, an isolated fork and therefore the platform support for things like Orange Pi and PinePhone uh, is going to get broken as we as we go ahead. So my intention would be to remove all the unsupported platforms, in other words, everything apart from Raspberry Pi. So that's where we're up to. So first of all, uh, you can go to the project page and I encourage you to, if you have a Raspberry Pi 4 lying around, uh, to try all this out and see if it works. If it doesn't work, let me know. Like I said, I have done minimal testing on this. Uh, so I'd like your feedback on that. And even more than that, I would really like your input on uh, addressing some of these issues. And that's basically it. I can't actually give a demo because my camera is pointing in the wrong direction. But whoops, didn't quite mean to do that. Let's move that out of the way. You didn't see that. So what I can do is I can do an ADB devices. There we go. So that you'll have to believe me is the Raspberry Pi. There's an AB shell. Yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi. It says so here, right? <laughs> You've got to believe me. Um, 
but it does all the kind of Android things you would expect. It is running the um, automotive version. As Joe but in fact, it's running on my Android car. What would be really cool at this point is if I could show you a, uh, a, a shot of the um, of the screen, but I wasn't clever enough to do that. <laughs> you could use screen copy, right? I could use screen copy. Would that actually work? Because it's actually connected to a different machine. I'm, I'm not going to try that. Once once you have ADB, it's, it should work. A screen copy? Okay. Oh. I was brilliant. It works. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So as you can see, this is Android 13 running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Kind of slowly. It if you're running it physically, it's 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 much faster. Yeah, that's what it does. Um, so that's it. That's all I have.